Hey everybody, Lance Goyke here. Today we're going to discuss rep ranges for power training. So we've already gone over strength work, one to six reps. We've already gone over hypertrophy work, about six to 12 reps. We've already gone over muscular endurance work, like 12 or more reps. And we've gone over cardiovascular endurance, which just kind of requires that my reps take at least two or three minutes, you know, and could go up to three hours or whatever, or longer. If you're running, I had a previous client who ran the Gobi Desert. It's like six days of marathons, basically, and they're just running all day, running or walking all day. It's crazy. OK, so rep ranges for power. Now, in doing this, in talking about power, we have to kind of backtrack. So we look at our strength work. And you remember that when we talked about rep ranges for strength work, we said the rep range was about one to six reps, but that we needed maximal intent. We needed to push ourselves as much as possible during those exercises. Now, the same is true for power, but less fatigue accumulates. The goal for power, again, let's go back to our principle of specificity. If I want power, there needs to be a time component to what I'm doing. It's not just about lifting more weight in this case. It's about finding this optimal range for me to lift a relatively heavy weight or maybe even a short weight, depending on you know the specificity of your goal. If I'm a pitcher, I just need to throw a tiny baseball really fast. So I don't need a whole lot of weight. You know, I can do some generalized training with you know heavier medicine balls but even that you know i don't need yeah I, I can do other stuff but the specificity rule demands that i move something that's really light really really fast conversely if i'm training for powerlifting and i want to build up my power output during my power lifts then I need to take the weight down. I'm not going to do that one to three rep kind of maximum weight. I'm going to take maybe 60, 70% of that, and I'm going to push it really, really fast, or I'm going to pick it up really, really fast. Because the idea here is we introduce this time demand. And if I have that maximal intent, you remember what happens to those muscles. They all get trained. If I work submaximally, there's no reason for my nervous system to tell all of my muscles to turn on. And so I don't get a training effect out of the ones that don't turn on, the ones that are, we say they are high threshold motor units. They will do anything they can to not turn on. So I need to increase weight or I need to increase speed. And the way that I do those two, one, I can put more weight on the bar or two, I can just try to lift a lot faster. I could try a lot harder. And so in general, if I'm looking for power output, I need to make sure that my speed stays high. And if it starts to dip lower, I'm no longer training max power output, right? I'm training maybe power endurance. I'm training maybe my resistance to fatigue, but I'm not training power. So the rep ranges for training for power need to be much shorter than they feel like they need to be. Generally, I don't go above five or six for untrained people. And for really trained people, I don't go above four reps in a row. Because if you can access those muscles, they're, you know, those high threshold motor units are not very well conditioned. They are still strong and they can still contract really ferociously, but they're going to fatigue really quickly because they don't have the capillarization. They don't have the fatigue resistance that some of the other more trained, maybe type one fiber muscles have those slow twitch fibers. Um, yeah, training for power. So hard and fast rule, the one to four reps. How about that? And make sure that you're getting, we talked about this previously, but make sure you're getting full recovery if you're training for power. It's not about, uh, it's not about just moving fast. It's about not fatiguing and moving as fast as possible.